Too many leaders lead for validation, not impact, for what they can get out of it more than what they can give to it. Hi, my name is Chris, and I'm obsessed with how leaders grow and develop, and I too have insecure moments. We all do. Glad you're here with me now on the Sight Shift Podcast so you can learn how to lead for impact, not validation. Welcome to part five, Lead for Impact. Too many leaders are leading for validation, not impact. And we broke down for you in the last episode what impact is. Impact is action plus motive. I want to dive into this word impact a little bit deeper. We're not bringing a sense of awareness into what we over or undervalue in our leadership. And so we stay stuck. We're so connected to the circumstance and our insecurity that we end up getting out of balance. We don't hold the value from a standpoint of balance and we can't hear what the other person values. So what do we do? What do we do when we find ourselves in this place that we're overwhelmed by the circumstance? Well, we learn a healthy skill to separate ourselves from the idea, the emotion, the experience, the circumstance. The word here is mindfulness. Mindfulness is a wonderful starting point. It's actually a terrible ending point though. It's a wonderful starting point because we get to go, all right, whatever circumstance that's overwhelming me right now, whatever emotion I find really troubling, whatever idea has me discouraged, I want to remove myself from that. And the power of mindfulness is we can then become the observer to our emotions, our thoughts, our feelings, our ideas, our experiences, our circumstances. That's awesome. I have done a lot of mindfulness work. I've, you know, I've done so many different types and forms of meditation. And I have no doubt a lot of you listening to this have in some way been helped by meditation and you've experimented with it or you've experienced it. Maybe it's a part of your routine or regimen. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Love that. As a great starting point, The reason I say it's a terrible ending point is because we haven't really done the work that we need to do until we turn the mindfulness into a mindset upgrade. The point isn't just to distance ourselves from the thoughts, the emotions, the feelings, the ideas. The point is to distance ourselves from it so we can see where we are, what we need to do, why we're acting, right action and right motive. We want to look at the situation and be able to engage situations with a mindset upgrade, with awareness, without insecurity, so that we can hold a value and healthy balance. This is why monks don't build great teams and families. I mean, when you think about it, the monk is still searching for something. Now, I love that they are, you know, modeling for us the power of meditation, the power of mindfulness work. What I love more is when they do the mindfulness work so deeply that the emptiness, the distancing from the observations of their ideas, thoughts, and feelings, and circumstances, whatever, that the emptiness of that then gets filled. The point of doing the work of mindfulness isn't just to get emptied. It's to get filled again. Filled with what? With vision, with ambition, with desires. You are a human. Without ambition and desires, you don't feel the meaning. You don't have the direction, the purpose, the focus. You don't have the quality of relationships. And if you're going to stay in a place that mindfulness is the answer and you have to keep being in the monk phase of meditation, it means you're not getting something you need. I'm more uh, motivated or excited by or enjoying a story about the monk who gets up and goes, all right, I'm done. I've done the meditation work. I've done the mindfulness work so deep now that the mindset upgrade has occurred. I'm going to go solve this problem in the world. I'm going to go do this thing. I'm going to go take some action. I'm going to start a company. I'm going to start a family, whatever. That's why action follows impact. Impact equals what? Action. But we're just talking about impact right now. And the reason so much impact doesn't happen is because right now we're so obsessed with mindfulness, separating ourselves from the idea, thought, emotion, circumstances troubling us. Great. We separate from it. We become the observer. Now we've been emptied to be filled. What are we filled with? If you're not doing the work of becoming aware then you get filled again with the insecurity of your identity. And when you get filled with the insecurity of your identity, your consciousness starts pinging you to take action for your validation, to comfort what you are struggling with. 
And that is not transformation. That's not a mindset upgrade. A mindset upgrade occurs when I separate myself from the thought, the idea, the circumstance. And then in that stillness, in that quiet, in that pause, in that space behind, I then am filled with the truth of who I am, the action, the identity, right? The awareness that isn't fear-driven, that isn't me leading for validation. Instead, it's me leading for impact. If you're at a place right now that you are consumed with your insecurities, then you can't hear what other people value that's different than you. To be the leader who leads for impact, to become mindful, to have the mindset upgrade is to go, okay, this is the value that I have. This is how I can get out of balance. This is how I can over or undervalue something. And you can look at that in the workbook or the, or the book. What I'm overvaluing or undervaluing is shaping where I am insecure. So I want to have a mindset upgrade and to learn how to hold this value in balance. So this is where you can take a moment now and look at those values and start to go, okay, if I'm going to hold these values in balance, where does my mindset need to upgrade so that I don't keep getting out of balance with this value? If you don't do this, then what ends up happening is you miss what others are valuing because you're consumed with what you value. And you then end up very oftentimes becoming a virtue signaler. You're just trying to signal to the world about what is so important to you. And in doing so, even if you really blast it times 10, put it out there in big ways, or it's just displayed through your conversation, through the actions you take, whatever, you become a person who is not being uh, that leader who leads for impact. So here's what I want to see you do. I want to see you wrestle with these values. And you can start with just as simple as this, like, what do I most value about the place that I'm working right now? What do I most appreciate about it? What do I wish was more true about the place that I'm working right now? Or it's a personal thing. It doesn't matter to me whether you see it personal or professional. If you see it in one, you'll see it in the other. What do I value most about the home environment? What do I want to see happen there more than anything else? Leaders who lead for impact are aware of what they're valuing so they don't get out of balance and over undervalue. They do mindfulness work to become separate from so that they can be filled with the action to take. That's what we're going to cover in the next episode as we dive deeper into this word action. For now, go through the values, workbook or book, look at what you value and start to build some awareness around where you can get out of balance. Thanks for joining me on this episode. There's always more for you at SightShift, S-I-G-H-T, shift.com to be the leader you were meant to be.